Greetings. I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another, you guessed it, Hobo Technos product review. Excellent! Today we have the Bowdens folding portable solar panel. And I put this solar panel through the same two month torture test in the desert as I did the last solar panel I just reviewed. It's been succumbed to high wind, to rain, to mud, to dirt. It's been fallen over several times in the rocks. How has it withstood the test of time? Let's find out. So let's check out what you get in the box. This is the old Bowdens, the ones I torture tested, but Bowdens sent me a brand new one and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's check out the brand new one, what you get in the box. Of course, you have the manual, which we'll go over here in a second. They give you a warranty card and you get the Bowdens panel itself, which of course has a zippered pocket on the back that contains all the goodies inside. Now you get an Anderson adapter cable for the panel, so you can plug this into many different power stations that have an Anderson input, including the new Jackery 1000. Then you also have the 5.5 millimeter, which is good for plugging into the original Bowdens power station. An MC4 adapter cable for the solar panel, so you can actually plug this in series or parallel with other solar panels, and I've done that. And of course you have all the adapters that you can use for everything from the eight millimeter all the way down to I think this is like 2.7 millimeter or smaller. And you can use these adapters to plug in just about anything. Inside we have the Bowdens user manual. So let's go check that out. Note the specification here it says it's IPX4 waterproof. So they do actually claim in the manual that this is a waterproof panel. Here are some specifications for the panel if you wanna see the size and weight. It does have a QC USB 3 USB output of up to 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And it does have a type C output that is good for 20 volts at three amps. That means this will charge a 60 watt USB device. Again, that's kind of rare in this industry, but it seems to be the new standard now. Bowdens does also offer a 24 month warranty on all their products. So if you have any problems, you can contact support at bowdens.com. And as stated in the manual, you have your regular DC output, your Type-C USB output, your QC3 USB-A output, and a regular USB-A output. This will charge devices up to 60 watts. So how did the Bowdens hold up after two months of torture in the desert? Well, we have an interesting scenario here. We have a brand new solar panel and the, the one that I beat up for two months. So let's do a direct comparison of what the new one versus the two month old one looks like. And you guys can judge for yourselves how well it held up. Now, first of all, the Bowdens doesn't use any cheap Velcro or anything like that to hold their solar panels together. They actually use these cloth straps, which are pretty heavy, and they have these heavy plastic clips. So it's only a matter of unclipping these and then the solar panel folds open. Now, as you can see, the solar panel is fairly sizable, but it's not very big, it's not very heavy compared to some other competitors. Also note that the Bowdens does actually have grommets in all four corners of the solar panel, which allows you to hang it up any way you desire, either horizontally or vertically. These are high efficiency solar panels that claim 22% efficiency. Notice the heavy duty cloth and stitching. It's all very high quality, very well put together. And notice this only has two legs in the back. You don't have four legs to fold down, basically two legs hold it up. Also notice that with the material that they use for the legs, the, the straps is actually a pretty heavy duty fabric. And I didn't have any problems tearing mine or anything like that in the two months I torture tested it. They are held down with Velcro. The only complaint is that the legs themselves are a little bit flimsy, but they do have some kind of metal or plastic inside. It keeps them nice and firm. It does have a decent rubberized handle for carrying. And note this pouch on the back is double zippered. You usually only get one zipper or you get Velcro or some other means to hold the bag together. And note on this side of the bag is actually some kind of waterproofing material. I can't tell if that's nylon or what, but that's probably how they get their IPX rating on this by making this bag waterproof. Obviously you can't dunk this thing in water and expect it to keep working, but it should have no problem resisting rain, snow, or hail. So how long does it take for this thing to set up and tear down? Let's check. And there you have it. How long does it take to tear down? Let's find out.
There you go. Now that you saw the quality of the brand new panel, let's take a look at how the panel held up that I tested in a desert for two months. You can see the fabric looks identical to the brand new one, except it's got some dirt on it, which that's not surprising. Same thing with the bag, got some dirt on it. Zippers work just fine. I have the other adapter in the house, it's not here, but I did actually use all these adapters. I even took this one apart so that I could run the panel in series with the Jackery. I also used the MC4 adapter to run in parallel and series with other panels to see how it worked out. You can see the clips work just fine, no degradation there. Remember, this was in the sun for two months in Arizona. How did the legs fare? They're filthy, but then again, this fabric held up just fine. I put logs and rocks and stuff, and I even used a tent peg. You can see it kind of crushed it a little bit. Still works just fine, nice and solid. Same with the other leg, no problem. Just dirty, that's all. So what you're about to see is actually my fault because I probably pushed this panel a little too hard. I used this MC4 adapter cable to run this in series with two other 100 watt panels because I wanted to charge one of my power stations. And basically I ran all three 100 watt panels in series and I figured that shouldn't be a problem for most solar panels, but we did have a little bit of an issue with this one. So while these solar panels here look fine, you'll notice there's a little bit of damage here on this one. And this was caused by a hot spot. Basically what happened was when I ran this solar panel in series with two other panels, the voltage may have been too high and it actually caused a hot spot here on the panel. And I immediately thought that this panel was gonna be destroyed, that it was no longer gonna work or function properly. But to my surprise, I did a power test on it and it was still putting out 85 watts. So even though this had a hot spot which caused the plastic on the panel to bubble up, it still works just fine. Now again, this only happened when I put three 100 watt solar panels in series. This did not have any problems at all with two 100 watt panels in series. In fact, I put this in series with both the Suoki 100 watt folding panel, which I did a review on, and I also put it in series with the 100 watt Jackery panel. And I had no problems charging the Suoki G1000, and I charged a couple of other things, including lead acid batteries from these solar panels in series, no problem. Now I wouldn't expect if you run this panel in parallel with other panels, you'll have any kind of problems whatsoever. But just be aware, on this Bowdens panel, don't run three of them in series, or you might have this overheating problem that you saw here. And again, even though it did overheat and bubble up, I did a wattage test on this and it still works perfectly fine. It's just cosmetic. But when I did report this damage to Bowdens, they immediately sent me a brand new 100 watt panel to complete my testing. They do seem to be very responsive and they do have a 24 month warranty. So if by some chance this would happen to you, you can always get another panel. But because I'm Professor Hobo, I'm required to try to break these things, push them to their limit, and if I come up with a problem, I have to report it to you guys. Now, Bowdens said they are going to look into this issue when running solar panels in series. My guess is that there's a 60 volt limit on this panel, so when I exceeded 60 volts, it caused an overheating in one of the diodes, and that probably caused the damage here. So how did the Bowdens hold up in my testing? Let's check that out. All right, now we got maximum solar. I'm gonna do a slight adjustment just to see. I was getting about 85 watts a few minutes ago. There we go, it's, it, it basically touched 80 watts there for a few seconds. So this is all we can do today with the sky conditions. I know it, it'll do 85 watts, but today we're getting about 80 watts out of the 100 watt panel. All right guys, we're back like a week later. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the sky to clear. We're just not having days of perfect blue skies here in Arizona. You can see behind me, there are some wispy clouds. There's nothing I can do about it. All of my tests today are gonna pretty much be based on mostly sunny conditions. And here's the Bowdens panel charging the Maxo Blue Eddy 1500 watt. All right, so that's what we're getting today. There's nothing I can do about it. It is a little cloudy and holding right now at 58 watts. As you can see, even on a cloudy day, we got some pretty good power out of this, but most importantly, this will charge a max of Blue Eddy. Maybe not as fast as two of these in series, but it did a pretty good job on its own, and that already puts it ahead of the competition because the Suoki couldn't handle the max of Blue Eddy, and neither could the Rock Pals 100 watt panel. Both of those failed to really charge the max of Blue Eddy because their voltage is so low. Bowden's voltage is actually a little bit higher. 
So the higher voltage will work with a lot more power stations out there. So you can feel safe, you can buy two of these, put them in series, and I did test two of these in series and had no problems. It was just when I put three in series, got that overheating issue. But you can get two of these, put two of these in series, and charge a Max Oak Blue Eddy or one of the other larger power stations pretty well. It's really hard not to recommend this Bowdens panel, especially at this price point, being one of the lowest price folding 100 watt solar panels on the market right now. It's almost worth getting two of these while you get the discounts. You can put them in series, you can charge just about anything with it, and with the adapter you can put them in parallel. So yes, before you guys ask, yes it's going to be possible to buy two of these, put two of them in parallel with the included MC4 adapter and charge the new Jackery Explorer 1000. It's up to you guys what you want to do if you want to get the higher quality Jackery panels or you want to get the little bit lower quality but significantly lower priced Bowdens panels. Again, this should work with just about any power station out there. You can't charge a battery directly with this. This does not come with any kind of alligator clips or any kind of way to clip it directly to a battery, which is smart because you don't want to charge a battery directly with one of these without a solar controller in the middle. The solar controller will take the high voltage of this panel and convert it to something that's better for a lead acid battery. So no, I do not recommend trying to plug this directly into your RV or anything else unless you have a solar controller in between. So what do I think about the Bowdens 100 watt folding solar panel? I think it's pretty awesome. It actually works very well. I've tested it with both of its portable power stations. Bowdens has two portable power stations out. Both of them are lithium iron phosphate. I did a review on the small one already quite a long time ago, and I have the, the new one, a larger version, portable power station review coming out pretty soon. I use this to charge both. It, it works just fine. I usually get about 80 to 85 watts charging out of this panel on a really good day. Now you're not going to get very much on a day like today where it's cloudy, it just rained, you're not going to get very much at all. That's why I did testing earlier on this when the sun was out. This held up very well to all my testing. I didn't have any physical problems with it except for that little overheating part. Again, that was kind of my fault for putting too many solar panels in series. I wouldn't blame Bowdens at all for that kind of damage. The only other solar panel I've had that's lasted as long as this is my Jackery 100 watt solar saga. That thing's a beast. That one's been knocked over, fallen on the rocks, been out in the rain, high winds and stuff for probably like the last nine months I've had it. And that thing really holds up. This thing so far, two months in the desert, during some pretty active times with a lot of high winds, we've got some rain and other stuff, held up very well. And unlike the Jackery panel or a lot of other panels, this is actually IPX rated water resistance. So Bowdens tells you you can use this outside in bad weather, which is very important to a lot of you. Heck, it's important to me too. So what's the competition for the Bowdens? Well, there are a lot of other folding solar panels out there in the 100 watt range. The Suoki is probably the direct competitor to this. It's more expensive than this. And that's where this panel really shines. Even without the Hobotech discount, this has a, currently a coupon on Amazon, which brings it well under the $200 range. But, of course, I'm going to offer a code. I wrote to Bowdens. I asked them to provide a promo code for Hobotech viewers. So, of course, look in the description below in this video to get that code. Use that at checkout on Amazon with the link provided in the description, and you will get a significant discount off this solar panel, which basically puts it in one of the cheapest 100 watt folding solar panels you can find on Amazon, and that's of March 2020. Remember, things change over time. When you watch this video in the future, that code might not work, and this price on this solar panel might go sky high. You never know, but right now, as of today, this 100 watt folding solar panel is one of the cheapest on the market. And it's actually pretty high quality and it has a QC3 charge port good for 60 watts. You can charge pretty much any device out there directly with a solar panel and just about any portable power station, including the Max Oak Blue Eddy. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. So if you guys want a little sneak preview of the new Bowdens 384 watt hour lithium iron phosphate 
portable power station. This is gonna be coming up in a review here pretty soon. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Barbie Gold Guy Hat.